Oh, it's it's great watching the swimmers and all the athletes compete, but I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, I did dedicate you know two decades of my life for the goal of going to Tokyo, but um, I'm you know I'm hopeful that the world is coming together to enjoy sport and athletes are able to compete in Tokyo. What did you What did you weigh up when when you made this decision? Um, it was a very easy decision for me to make because I knew that the Myanmar Olympic Committee was being controlled by the military, and I just wanted to stand by the people of Myanmar. So um, that's it. Um, I just really wanted to stand by, stand by the people and be on the right side of history. What impact do you think a protest like yours can actually have? Um, internationally, it hasn't gained a lot of traction. The IOC continues to um, ignore my calls. Um, but hopefully, I think a lot of Myanmar people are paying attention and a lot of Myanmar youths are will be inspired by what I've done, that I've sacrificed my dreams to stand in solidarity with them. And um, I'm going to continue to, you know, work for their um, hopes and dreams and aspirations. And I hope it can inspire them to keep continuing their um, protests, their revolution, and that one day we're going to be free. Would it have been too dangerous to try and use Tokyo as a platform to speak out? Yes. Yeah, so my argument was that the Myanmar Olympic Committee should not be invited to Tokyo at the Olympic Games and should not be there at all. So I never imagined myself being there under the Myanmar flag. So I wouldn't go. Um, and I'm glad I didn't go because now the Myanmar Olympic Committee has sent a military-backed athlete to Tokyo Games. And I don't want to stand next to him. I don't want to stand next to him while his colleagues are essentially killing people in Myanmar every day. You do talk, though, about using sport as a path of reconciliation and peace. How do you think that could happen? Um, primarily through education. Uh, the Olympic movement, the IOC members have all said that education is a key for sport to be relevant in the mo modern world. And I think education is meant to be a humanist enterprise. We're supposed to be raising boys and girls to be upstanding adults in the future. And sport has a role to play in that. Um, and I do want to. I, I do wish once Myanmar is free, we can use sport to reconcile different communities and Myanmar that have been at odds for so long, um, especially with the Rohingya community, the Kachin people, the Kiyan people, that the, you know the Myanmar military has assaulted for for decades. Mm. But for you, in the immediate, in the immediacy of this regime being in place and cracking down so heavily on your countrymen, what what is it that is your priority? Uh, right now, I'm, I've, you know, I've abandoned my career as a swimmer. So right now, I'm, you know, starting a project to raise funds for Myanmar, um, so that we can provide humanitarian assistance to different communities in Myanmar. That's my priorities right now. Um, not as a Myanmar athlete, but now as I guess a supporter of the Myanmar Revolution, um, to support the revolution in Myanmar, so that Myanmar can be free. And how do you feel about the Australian government's response to what has happened there? I think it's, honestly, I think it's a bit disappointing. Um, Prime Minister Scott Morrison has been saying a lot about how he, he's going to lead um, in the Asia-Pacific region, but so far has just followed blindly um, behind ASEAN, which is an impotent organization that hasn't been doing anything for Myanmar people. So I think he needs to be a bit more assertive, and especially now when the Myanmar military has released photos of Sean Turnell, um, I think he, ha at least do it for Sean Turnell, who's detained in Myanmar. He's um, we worry for his safety, his health, and um, you know, he's a hero. He's a hero of Australia. He's a hero for Burmese people. And I think at least the least Scott Morrison, Prime Minister Scott Morrison could do is to back Sean Turnell and to help um, the cause of democracy in Myanmar. And, 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 and to your point about the cause of the ongoing sort of protest movement and all the sort of disparate fighting groups, how, how much success do you think they're going to have? Uh, it's, they're against overwhelming odds because the Myanmar military has the heavy weapons, the artillery, the air power. But I think the people are overwhelmingly with the, um, the guerrillas, the public defense force, people's defense force. And, you know, it might take time, it might take years, it might take a decade or more. But I think the people are going to win. I think slowly we'll whittle down the military. and. The military um, soldiers there will start to realize that, you know, they they are slaves, and they're slaves of these generals who make billions of money, billions of dollars, from you know, 
from their work essentially keeping uh, keeping the people in line, killing people, and they don't want to be a part of it. Um, so everyone's going to wake up, um, and I'm sure over time the revolution will succeed. Wynn, appreciate you sharing your story with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.